Well, good morning and welcome to New Hope Online Worship. Happy Boxing Day, and if we didn't get the chance to exchange greetings yesterday, a very Merry Christmas to you and to your family. Today we have the privilege to worship together. Sam Farbod is going to come and preach a message on God's love. I hope that will be a deep encouragement and a blessing to you in this wonderful season as we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ into our midst. Let's worship together in song. The passion of our Savior The mercy of our God The cross that leaves no question of the measure of his love and our chains are gone our debt is paid the cross has overthrown the grave for Jesus' blood that sets us free means death to death and a life for me the innocent judge guilty while the guilty one walks free and death would be his portion and I portion liberty And our chains are gone Our debt is paid The cross has overthrown the grave For Jesus' blood that sets us free Means death to death and life for me. And I give my whole life to honor this love by the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven the sinner Savior crown him forever for the Lamb who was slain He is risen as I give my whole life to honor this love by the Lamb who was slain I'm forgiven the sinner Savior crown him forever sets us free means death to death and a life for me means death to death and a life for me on the 
chain breaking, miracle making, powerful name of Jesus. On the body raising, prodigal saving, powerful name of Jesus. week we begin to think about endings and beginnings. Ending one year and beginning another. And as I was waiting on the Lord, I was saying, God, what are you wanting to say to us as a church family right now? God showed me the words blessing and freedom. And the Bible's full of freedom and blessing. Jesus came to heal and set people free. And today we want to say yes to what he's setting us free from and what he's wanting to bless us with. Will you join me as we pray? Oh God, we want to thank you. Thank you for your presence. Come Holy Spirit, as we pause, as we wait, as we just focus on you, on who you are, We love you and we thank you that you are the God of all creation and we thank you that you are the God who wants to speak and move and release in our lives every day. So God, we bring before you right now now those things that weigh heavy on us after a long and arduous year. Those things that have burdened us, God, we want to just release them right now at the end of the year we want to say 
take them, Lord. So God, we ask that you will be breaking off fear. A lot of us carry that. We know that you just don't want us to carry that. And you tell us in your word that perfect love, your perfect love, casts out all fear. So Lord Jesus, where there is fear right now, pray that you'll just be lifting that off in Jesus' name. Lord God, where there is anger and frustration and just that sense of uh, stress in our lives, God, we know that you tell us in Ephesians 4 that the evil one just gets a foothold when we have unkept anger. So God, we don't want to hold that anymore. So we give that to you, God. We ask that you will remove the stress that is within us, that causes us to respond in ways that we're not proud of. Fill us with your peace. Reset us, God. And put in our hearts and in our spirits a love for everyone that we interact with, God, especially those that we find hard to love. God, help us just to see people through your eyes and to walk in your peace, God, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Lord God, I ask that it will be guarding our hearts and our minds. God, we need you. So come, come, we pray. I felt you laying on my heart to pray over addictions today. So God, we just want to bring them before you. I know there are some of us watching today who are really struggling. And God, we know that it is not in your plan for your beloved creation to suffer under the weight of addiction. And so God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to ask that you will do a new thing, that you will break off the strongholds and that you will release your presence now. Do a new thing, I ask, Holy Spirit. Cleanse, heal, put hope into our hearts where there has been no hope. And God, where we've just had oppression in our spirits, just over the heaviness of the last year, God, will you lift that right now in Jesus' name. Just breathe the breath of your presence into our homes and our living rooms, wherever we are, God, just breathe it in. And we just say, yes, we don't want to hold on to that heaviness anymore. So come, Holy Spirit, breathe fresh life. We pray. We thank you that you remind us in Galatians 5 that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And he's also reminded us to stand firm then and do not let ourselves be burdened. So, God, we stand firm on who you are and who you have called us to be. And we say yes today. This is not a promise for some. It's a promise for everyone who says yes to you today, God. So we just receive that right now. And Lord God, as we step into this fresh year, I want to pray that you will just be releasing blessing. Release blessing upon blessing over your body today, we pray. Your children, your beloved. You might even just want to put your hands out right now just as an act of saying, yes, God, I am ready. Lord, thank you that each and every one of us is worthy because we are loved by you and created in your image. So God, we ask that your blessings would flow and that we would just expectantly look to see where you're moving and what you're doing in our hearts even today. Lord, we pray for freedom over your church this year. We thank you that as we do begin another year, you are wanting to do new and wonderful things. You are wanting to move in power. Thank you that I really sense you saying that you're wanting to shed some of the old wineskins that have constricted the work that you wanted to do. And in this season, you want to put new wineskins. You put new wineskins on us to receive all the goodness that you have, the new wine, the new blessing 
the new freedoms, God. And so we just say, yes, do what you need to do. We just want more of you, God. So, God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are above all, you are in all, and you are through all, God. Lord, may what we carry fill us up, be a blessing to us, and we pray that your presence would overflow to all of those that we connect with each and every day in our homes, our workplaces, our schools, wherever we are, God, whatever we're doing. Lord, overflow that we might be like a light on a hill in a world that desperately needs to know of your beautiful love. And Lord, I want to pray today for courage, courage that it may be bolstered within each of our spirits, courage to live our full life in you and through you, courage to speak out words, courage to pray blessings. Yes, Lord, give us courage, we pray. Holy Spirit, fill us with more of you. Awaken us today for the year that lies ahead. We love you. We need you. We thank you. We bless your holy name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and bring you peace. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. I have a question for you. Have you ever baked a cake? Maybe you've baked some brownies or maybe you've even baked some bread. There are many steps in cooking, but usually the first step is measuring the ingredients. Now, when you're measuring out ingredients, which things do you think I could use to measure flour, sugar and milk? Do you think it might be a measuring cup? Do you think it might be a tape measure? Or do you think it might be a watch? That's right, we use a measuring cup when we are baking. But I wonder if we can use a measuring cup to measure God's love. Hmm, in the Bible verse today, it talks about Jesus and how God sent Jesus down to earth to save us from our sins because he loves us so much. So if we're building something, which of these do you think that you could use to measure the length? Do you think it might be a tape measure? That's right, a tape measure. But I wonder, can you use a tape measure to measure God's love? Mm. The Bible tells us that God's love is higher than the heavens. So if God's love is higher than the heavens, I don't think we can use a measuring tape, can we? What do you think I can use to measure time? Maybe a watch? You can use a watch to measure time. There will probably be some people here this morning who will use their watch to measure how long somebody's sermon might be. I wonder if we could use a watch to measure God's love. The Bible tells us that God's love is everlasting. Whoa, so if God's love is everlasting, I guess we couldn't measure it with a watch. So in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11, the verse tells us that God sent his servant in a form of a human, that's Jesus, and became obedient to death, meaning that because God loves us so much that he sent his son down to earth to die for our sins so that we can spend eternal life with him. What? How do you even measure a love like that? Well, that is just it. We don't need to, but we do need to experience it. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tash and I'm so excited to have you all witness my baptism today. My faith journey, like many others, has had its ups and downs, but through it all, I've seen some of God's character reveal itself. So today I would like to share with you what I've learned about him with the hope that one person might be encouraged by my words. The first thing I've come to learn about God is He's given us a choice. 
I was blessed enough to grow up in a loving family that both guided me towards a Christian life, but also encouraged me to form my own beliefs. I've made mistakes along the way and even strayed from God for periods of time, but I've always had loving ones around me to keep me on track. Five years ago, I met my best friend Izzy, who has grown with me in our faith journeys and led by example what a true Christian life is. I've asked her to pray for me today as I often feel I would not be the person I am without her. Though I am incredibly grateful to have had guidance in my life, I am so happy and proud to say the decision to become baptised has been my own. I know that this is what God wants of me and I'm so certain that He has called me to be in His kingdom. Growing up, I was always taught to count my blessings and thank God for the life He gave me. But it was only until I recently began to reflect on His favour that I realised the abundant blessings God has given me. Every time I talk to God, I find myself praising Him for His goodness. Even when I feel stressed about school, I appreciate the fact that I'm fortunate enough to receive an education. I am also surrounded by an amazing youth group and two amazing youth leaders, Annie and Siggy, who are baptising me today. I have done nothing to deserve God's grace, and in this, I realise that any time I spend doubting God's love isn't me not building His kingdom. I see baptism as the next step for me to be a beacon of His love to others so that they can feel His blessings that I feel. The knowledge that life itself is a gift from God and that His love is eternal is enough for me to fully put my trust in Him and start focusing on what His plan is for me. When I decided to become baptised, I still had my doubts and this made me feel extremely guilty for not being 100% sure. I expressed my doubts to a few people and was comforted in the knowledge that no matter where you are in your faith journey, you will still find challenges. So many things can distract you from building the relationship God wants. Our faith trembles and varies, but God is always waiting for us to come back. This became apparent to me when I was reminded that He sacrificed His only Son to erase our sins. Though we should never use God's grace as an excuse, I have learned that He will never tire of our constant failures, because all He wants is for us to come to Him. I no longer want to dwell on my doubts, but rather run into God's arms and embrace His love. Finally, I would like to encourage anyone who is unsure about their faith. As Lance mentioned a few weeks ago, even if you think the whole church thing is great for someone else, but not for you, I encourage you to give it some thought. God wants us to question Him and be curious. I'm pretty sure faith is something I'll be figuring out my whole life, but I am reassured knowing God will always be there for me. So today, I am fully putting my trust in God, and I'm so excited to spend my life publicly declaring my love for Him. Thank you. Lord, I'd like to just thank you for this amazing and wonderful person that Tash is. I'd like to thank you that she has decided to take this step further in her faith. Um, I pray that you would help her to become a steward of your love and be able to show um, all those that she encounters in her life your love. I pray that she would know that you have an endless love for her and that she is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. I pray all these things over Tash, and I'd just like to thank you so much for this decision that she's made to follow you for her whole life. In your name, amen. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth. who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Good morning, New Hope family. Merry Christmas. I wish you and your family a joyful time during this Christmas. 
it is good to see almost all restrictions are lifted and we can enjoy traveling longer distances and catch up with our friends and family members and enjoy time of being together. I believe this Christmas tastes different, differently for us because for a long time and around two years, we have been under different lockdowns and have experienced their pressure on different aspects of our lives. I think you would agree with me that we usually enjoy something and appreciate its presence in our life when it was absent from our lives for a long time. In the same way, today we acknowledge and appreciate this freedom because we have been deprived of it for uh, almost two years. Today, I'm going to speak about a similar sense of freedom and comfort, which some of our Persian friends have found in Jesus. They believe they never had been able to experience this kind of freedom and comfort in past when they were Muslims. I believe listening to their stories and exploring their lived experiences could be very helpful and encouraging for us. It could encourage us and remind us of all the blessings we have in Jesus. Let me explain which kind of freedom I'm speaking about. As a part of my studies, PhD studies, a few years ago, I had the privilege of interviewing some of our Persian friends in the church to explore their lived experiences of their journeys from Islam to Christianity. As you know, many of our Persian friends have come to Australia to take refuge and start a new life and enjoy freedom in this beautiful country. However, beside their physical journeys from Iran to Australia, they have experienced a spiritual journey as well, which has eventually directed them to accept Jesus as their savior and convert to Christianity. In my research, I try to understand how they see, make sense, and interpret their lived experiences. As you know, conversion to Christianity could be very dangerous for people who are coming from Islamic background. But for some certain reasons, our Persian friends have risked their lives by believing in Jesus and following him. During my conversations with these Persian friends, they spoke of their captivating stories and their lived experience of how they came to know Jesus and believed in him. I was truly touched and moved by listening to their stories. All of them believed they have experienced a deep transformation in their lives and also in their understandings of God and his character during this journey. In fact, this new understanding and perception of God has created a deep sense of comfort, peace, joy, freedom in them. And all of them believed that before coming to Christ, they always felt that something is missing in their spiritual space. They suffered from some kind of spiritual dissatisfaction. Always they carried a sense of rejection, uncertainty, fear, and hopelessness within them. It seems for them that they are kept captive and chained by these painful feelings. They believe when they came to Jesus, they found a new image and perception of God, which 
has transformed their lives. From their perspective, there are significant differences between the picture they had from God and his character in the past with the ones which they have now. The most highlighted difference emphasized by these friends was the love of God. Let me explain this in more details. What the love of God means for our Persian friends and why it is so special and meaningful for them. In the past, our Persian friends were told that there is a huge gap and distance between God and humankind. They were told that it is impossible for humankind to have a close and personal relationship with God. They were told the only thing which people could do is, in order to get closer to God, is to surrender to him and obey his commands. By this way, they may avoid God's anger and punishment. However, there was no guarantee that they could keep God happy. In their conscience, they always felt that something is wrong and it is missing in their relationship with God. When they came to Christ, they found the missing part. It was a personal and close relationship and friendship with God. They believe this sense of closeness to God, which they have experienced in Jesus, has given them comfort, freedom. Freedom from their all their hopelessness and feeling of failure and rejection. Let me share a quotation from a Persian friend whom I interviewed during my research. This reflects, in fact, his feeling about his relationship with God when he was a Muslim. He says, always I was thirsty to know God, but he was far away. How could I know him when he was far I always felt there is something wrong in my relationship with God, and I blamed myself for it until I came to know Jesus and believed in him. Now I have a sense of personal relationship with God. I know he is with me each moment of my life. He never leaves me alone. He listens to me answers my prayers, and lives with me. This closeness to God means a lot for Muslim background believers. According to their previous faith system, they were told that they are abts of God, which means they were slaves of God. In their previous understanding of God, it was considered as blasphemy to believe that someone could have a personal relationship and friendship with him. In fact, any idea of having a close relationship with God was considered as dishonoring God and compromising his greatness. Let me to share another quotation of people whom I interviewed. One of them says, The only perception that I have had since my childhood was that God is character who lives in heaven. He has created us and we live here on earth by ourselves. Before converting to Christianity in the same way, I viewed God as a person who was very distant from me. I couldn't receive any message from him and the prophets had come to tell us what we must do and what we must not do. That's all. I didn't have a feeling of closeness to God. The image of God in in the past was like a boss. 
This sense of God's closeness has been a certain part of our Persian friends' lived experience during their journey from Iran to Australia. They believe during their journey to Australia, God was always with them, and they have experienced his presence in a tangible way. In the difficult times, God was with them. God gave them hope and sustained them. They believe during the most distressing time of their journey, when they were traveling on the sea, God was with them. When they were traveling on small rotten boats, packed by tens of passengers, God was present and he didn't let them to lose their hope. As you may know, the smugglers who brought them to Australia used the oldest and cheapest boats to carry them from Indonesia to here. They didn't want to risk their money by investing in newer and safer boats. For many days, our Persian friends traveled on these rotten and unsafe boats, and many times they found themselves only a few moments away from being sunk and drowned. But among all those troubles, they believe God was with them, and this awareness of his presence sustained them and didn't let them to lose their hope. In addition to God's closeness and his personal relationship with them, our Persian friends have learned that God's love for them is not a normal life, love. But they have found that God's love for them is a radical and limitless love. The kind of love which was completely alien to them in the past. As Shiite Muslims, our Persian friends always carried a feeling of fear, uncertainty in their relationship with God. As we saw, they were told that there is a huge gap and distance between God and them. They were told that they need to work hard, I mean very hard, to fill this gap by the, their own actions, by doing good and performing religious rituals. It was up to them to try hard to keep God happy and try to move closer to him step by step. As a matter of fact, they never felt that they are getting closer to God. They always carried some sense of failure, rejection, frustration. Even they blamed themselves for this failure. They were not sure if at the end God would accept them or not. They were not sure if one day they would be allowed to enter to paradise or not. Let me read another quotation from one of our Persian friends. She says, The God whom I knew before in Shiite Islam was a tyrant God. He was monitoring me to see if I would perform anything wrong so he could put me in hell. This God, which I have now, Jesus Christ, always and everywhere, he says, anytime you come back to me, I will accept you. He is always waiting to welcome and embrace me. The previous God was seeking any reason to reject me. When looking back to their experience and spiritual journeys, our Persian friends believe that the image which they had from God in the past was completely different. They believe they have found a 
different image of God in Jesus. This loving God didn't wait for them to try hard, ascend, and reach him to in heaven. Instead, he came down. He sent his son, Jesus, among people and revealed his love to them through Jesus. They believe Jesus' incarnation and his sacrificial act on the cross is reflective of God's radical and limitless love for them. In their previous understanding of God, it was considered as blasphemy to believe God could come down, take a human form, live among his people, and even sacrifice himself for the sake of their salvation. Now, my friends, we know that this sense of being accepted and loved by someone else is a part of our deepest emotional and psychological needs. This is the way that God has created us. For us, closeness and intimacy means love, security, safety, peace, and comfort. A mother's hug brings peace, joy, and comfort for her baby. In fact, we see this is the way that God has pictured himself in the Bible. For example, we read in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13, God says, as a mother comforts her child, I shall comfort you. What a beautiful picture of God, picture of love of God. Our Persian friends feel comforted and assured when they learn in the Bible, for example, for example, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10, God says, For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not be depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord. And this brings us to another aspect of the love of God which is so meaningful and real for our Persian friends. During their relationship with God, they have found that God's love for them not only is a radical love, but it is unconditional. They believe they have experienced the unconditional love of God in a practical way. When our Persian friends look back at the time when they were Muslims, they realize that this loving God has been always with them since the early years of their lives, since many years before they have come to Christ. God has been trying to reveal himself to them. They believe God was with them in every moment of their life and used every situation to call them to himself. They believe it was God who took the first step and tried to call them up. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10 and verse 16, Jesus says, And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. As we see, this is what exactly happening to our Persian friends. At the time when they were, they didn't know God, God called them and invited them to join to his fellowship. God called them through different ways. As you know, for some of them, through dreams and visions. For many of them, through media, satellite, and online Christian radio and TV programs. And sometimes he used other Christians to share the good news with 
our Persian friends and serve them. While in the past, our Persian friends were told that God only accepts people who believe in him and are submissive and obedient. And in fact, he hates, God hates unbelievers based on their lived experience. They have found that in Jesus, God loves all people both believers and unbelievers. When looking back at their lived experience, they believe God always loved them and he strived to bring them to his own knowledge and to call them his children. From our Persian friend's perspective, the love of God is radical and also it is unconditional. And therefore, no one and nothing can separate them from his love. They are assured that in Jesus they are accepted and have become the children of God. Let me share another quotation from a different member of our Persian community with you. He says, when I'm looking back to my past, since my childhood, I realized that God was always present and had been working in my life, and it is true. There is a God, he means in Islam, who sits up high, and there is a different God in Christian faith, who, for the sake of his people, whom he has created, comes down and becomes equal with them. In Christianity, God's promise is his presence. We are going to be in his presence, his throne, and we will live with him in one place eternally, and we will feel God's presence in a complete, tangible way. This is enjoyable. This is different. And later he continues in his interview, he says, God's heart is my heart. His presence is in me. I do commit sin. I am sinner, but this cannot keep me away from God. God knows better than me that I am sinner, but he accepts me. As we see, our Persian friends believe their new perception of God and their close and personal relationship with him has transformed their lives and set them free from all their feelings of rejection, failure, and fear. Now they can enjoy their fellowship and friendship with God, and they are able to experience the fullness of his presence to live a life enriched by peace, hope, and assurance. And at the end, I would like to add something important. In fact, one of the practical ways our Persian friends have experienced the love of God is the love and care they received from people in the church. They believe people's love for strangers in a church is reflective of God's unconditional and sacrificial love for them. The loving attitudes of people and their care for those others have encouraged our Persian friends to connect to church community and become a part of it. Our Persian friends experience of their journey with Jesus and his loving presence has always been encouraging for me. I am sure you feel the same way. I pray for people and especially for Muslims who haven't been able to hear about Jesus and his amazing love. I also pray for people who have never been able to have a sense of closeness and intimacy with the Heavenly Father. I pray for them. May the Lord 
open their hearts and let his light shine upon them so they can see his closeness, feel his presence, and receive the heavenly blessings, peace, joy, freedom, comfort. So, can, so they can taste his amazing love and enjoy a personal relationship with him. Enjoy the freedom and peace which could be found in Jesus only. Amen. And God bless you, oh, my dear friends. Wake my soul. Come away. To hunger. To seek. To thirst.
Well, it's been good to stop, take time together, and worship God today. Christmas is a wonderful season with so many blessings and family opportunities. It's also a season in which some of the real needs of our human experience come bubbling to the surface. Our New Hope Community Care has been doing excellent work over this Christmas season. And through the generosity of people at New Hope, we have touched many families and many lives. And as we land our service today, I'd like to take just a moment to pray for those families, for your family, and for our mission in the world as we live in the midst of God's incredible love. Would you join me as we pray? Loving God, we pray for all of those in this Christmas season who have been touched by the love of God in practical ways, in deeply spiritual ways, in ways that embody the love of Jesus Christ through the church, in ways that embody the hope of a new creation through our relationship with one another and with you. I pray for all the families who are connecting with New Hope through this worship service today. And I pray, O oh God, for the continuing impact of this wonderful story of your love in our lives, in our relationships, and in the world. These things we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God bless you all.